Hi. Hi, hello, dear students. Today we are going to discuss on the comic book Tintin and Tibet by Hodge, which is part of your semester one syllabus, popular culture and uh, literature. And uh, Tintin in Tibet is a world famous comic series. And uh, what this particular comic series is about, let's have a short brief note on it in the beginning itself. It is the 20th volume of the Adventures of Tintin, Tintin in Tibet. The comic series by the Belgian cartoonist Herge. So Herge is the author of Tintin in Tibet. And it was serialized weekly from September 1958 to November 1959 in Tintin magazine and published as a book in 1960. Tintin in Tibet is the story of Tintin rescuing his chi young Chinese friend Chang, first met in the Blue Lotus from the 80th after a plane crash in the Himalayas. So Chang and Tintin has already met in an earlier comic series of Tintin Adventures that is Blue Lotus. And in Tintin in Tibet, uh, we can see that in the beginning of the uh, comic book, Tintin gets a letter from Chang and he's an old friend. And later he reads about a plane crash in the Himalayas. And he gets to connect that Chang was in the plane and maybe he has died or not but uh, we'll see the story anyway uh, the summary of the story but uh, moving on to the gist of the story the story tells of the young reporter Tintin in search of his friend Chang Chong Chen who the authorities claim has died in a plane crash in the Himalayas convinced that Chang has survived and accompanied only by Snowy, Captain Haddock and the Sherpa guide Tarke Tintin crosses the Himalayas to the plateau of Tibet along the way encountering the mysterious Yeti and Yeti hope you have all heard about it it's a an ape-like creature and the natives, the Tibetan people and also uh, the, Hima the people who live around the Himalayas, they believe that Yeti lives there. It's a big ape-like creature. So, Herge, the author of Tintin, he has brought this imaginary creature also into the comic book. Okay, let's uh, see the about the author Herge. His, it is the pen name of Georges Remy. He was born on May 22nd, 1907, at Tiburk, near Brussels, Belgium, and he died on March 3rd, 1983, Brussels. He is a Belgian cartoonist who created the comic strip hero Tintin, a teenage journalist. When I was small and when I read Tintin, I thought that Tintin was a detective. And I felt like that when I read the comic books of Tintin, but uh, now we uh, get to know that he was a teenage journalist. And over the next 50 years, Tintin's Adventures filled 23 albums and sold 70 million copies in some 30 languages. Throughout the years, the young reporter remained recognizably the same with his signature blonde quiff and his plus pose. Quiff is, uh, that is how we understand Tintin, the hair that is being put up. So whenever we see a boy whose hair is like that, we nickname his, uh, him as Tintin. Now, Herge is the French pronunciation of RG or his initials reversed. We already saw his name is Georges Remy. So, RG and it is the French RG, the French pronunciation of RG is Herge. So, that is how he got this particular pen name or the pseudonym of Georges Remy, the author of Tintin. His best known and most substantial work is The Adventures of Tintin comic book series which he wrote and illustrated from 1929 until his death in 1983 leaving the 24th Tintin adventure Tintin and Al Fart unfinished. His work remains a strong influence on comics particularly in Europe. He was inducted into the Comic Book Hall of Fame in 2003. So he is the author of the Edward Joseph Tintin comic book series and he started writing from 1929 till he, until his death in 1983 and he the last book is Tintin and Alphard which he couldn't finish. On finishing school in 1925, Georges worked at the Catholic newspaper the 20th century under the editor Norbert Wallace, a Catholic abode, a priest, abode means a priest. The following year, he published his first cartoon series, Thought Talk. In the scouting magazine Le Boy Scott Belge. In 1928, he was put in charge of producing material for the 20th century 
new weekly supplement for children, The Little Twentieth. He began illustrating the adventures of Fluff, Nenesi, Posite, and Coconut, a strip written by a member of the newspaper sports staff, but soon became dissatisfied with this series. Palace asked Remy to create a young hero, a Catholic reporter who would fight for good all over the world. He decided to create a comic strip of his own, which would adopt the recent American innovation of using speech balloons to depict words coming out of the characters' mouths, inspired by their use by established French comics author Alain Saint Augen. So he, this is how George Remy or Hirsch ultimately started the Adventures of Tintin. So this is how it all happened. He was uh, he worked in a Catholic newspaper. He worked for the children's magazine and later he created his own comic character, Tintin. Now this was the first book, Tin The Adventures of Tintin and the Land of the Soviets. It appeared in the pages of Le Petit Ventim that the that is uh, the magazine for the kids, the little twentieth, on ten January nineteen twenty nine and ran until 8 May 1930. The strip chronicled the adventures of a young reporter named Tintin and his pet fox terrier Snowy as they journeyed through the Soviet Union. The character of Tintin was partly inspired by George's brother Paul Remy, an officer in the Belgian army. So Tintin, he got the idea of Tintin, the character of Tintin was inspired by the brother of the author Paul Remy, and also you have always seen uh, Tintin with the dog white fox terrier, the pet of Tintin and his name is Snowy because it's too white. No, Milo is the French name of Snowy. Hurge reached a watershed with the Blue Lotus, the fifth Tintin adventure. So the Blue Lotus, what is the significance of Blue Lotus when we are discussing about Tintin in Tibet is that the main character other than Tintin is Chang who is being lost in the Himalayas. This Chang and Tintin appear first together in this particular Tintin adventure, the Blue Lotus. So he reached a watershed means he was very popular when he started writing the Blue Lotus. At the close of the previous story, Cigars of the Pharaoh, he had mentioned that Tintin's next adventure would bring him to China. Father Gosset, the chaplain of to the Chinese students at the Catholic University of Leuven, wrote to Herge urging him to be sensitive about what he wrote about China. Hoje agreed and in the spring of 1934, Gosset introduced him to Chang Chong Jen, Chang Chong Ren, a young sculpture student at the Brussels Academy Royal Des Beaux Arts. So that is the friend of Hoje and under whom we can see that the friend of Tintin is being uh, the same person, the character is being stylized. So, the Blue Lotus is the fifth Tintin adventure and it is based on China. And here Tintin has a Chinese friend just like uh, the author of Tintin Hearth has a Chinese friend. The two young artists be quickly became close friends and Chang introduced Hearth to Chinese culture and techniques of Chinese art. As a result of this experience, Hearth strove in the Blue Lotus and in subsequent Tintin adventures to mimetic meticulously accurate in depicting the places which Tintin visited. As a token of appreciation, he added a fictional Chang to the Blue Lotus, a young Chinese boy who meets and befriends Tintin. So that is how the character of Chang appears. So the character of Chang is a fictionalized version of his Chinese friend. Okay. And uh, now the Blue Lotus is the fifth adventure series of Tintin. And this is where Chang and Tintin first meets. At the end of his studies in Brussels, Chang returned home to China and Hoj lost contact with him during the invasion of China by Japan and subsequent Chinese civil war. More than four decades passed before the two friends would meet again. Now this is the cover of the Blue Lotus. The increased demands which Tintin Magazine placed on Hoj began to take their toll. In 1947, Prisoners of the Sun was interrupted for two months when an exhausted Hoj took a long vacation. In order to lighten Hoj's workload, Hurt Studios were set upon 6 April 1950. So Hurt Studio means there will be a collaborated uh, team of uh, writers and uh, the character sketchers and all that. So that they will help Hirsch into uh, painting or writing the adventure series of Tintin. 
So the studio employed several assistants to aid her in the production of the Adventures of Tintin. And foremost among these was the artist Bob T. Moore who collaborated with her on the remaining Tintin adventures. So the Tintin, uh, sorry, sorry, the Hurd Studios was set upon 6 April. By the end of this period, his personal life was again in crisis. And so when we talk about Tintin in Tibet, there was uh, an instance of a psychological trauma that Hurd was go going through when he started uh, writing his, uh, this particular adventure of Tintin. And during this psychological trauma, Whenever he closed his eyes, he could only see white, snowy, snowy white, full of snow. So that is why in the pages of this comic book, you will see snow and snow. In some pages, there is only snow. So that is uh, because of the personal trauma that uh, his marriage was in a crisis because he was in love with another woman and he had to leave his wife. So all these personal crises ultimately led to the uh, led to while he was writing this particular comic book. His marriage with wife Germaine was breaking apart after 25 years. He had fallen in love with Fanny Blamnix, a young artist who had recently joined the Hurd Studios. Furthermore, he was plagued by recurring nightmares filled with whiteness. He consulted a Swiss psychoanalyst who advised him to give up working on Tintin. Instead, he finished Tintin in Tibet started the year before. But he couldn't just stop writing about Tintin, he started writing about uh, refreshed his writing and uh, Tintin in Tibet was written from 1958 to 1959. The adventure allowed Hoge to confront his nightmares by filling the book with austere alpine landscapes giving the adventure a powerful spacious setting. The normally rich cast of characters was paired to a minimum. So we will not see all the major characters in the Tintin series in this particular book. We will only see uh, Snowy, Captain Haddock, uh, the characters that always uh, repeat in most of the adventures of Tintin. We will not see all the characters. We have only Snowy and Captain Haddock. And also we have the Sherpa Tarke who held them to walk through the, go through the Himalayas. As the story focused on Tintin's dog to search for Chan, Hurge came to regard this highly personal and emotional riveting Tintin adventure as his favorite. He considers Tintin in Tibet as his masterpiece. The completion of the story seemed also to signal an end to his problems. He was no longer troubled by nightmares, divorced Germain in uh, 1977 and finally married Fanny Blamnik on 20 May of the same year. Hurch died on 3rd March 1983, aged 75. He had been severely sick for several years, but the nature of his disease was unclear, possibly leukemia or a form of porphyria. His death was hastened by the HIV he had acquired during his weekly blood transfusions. He left the 24th Tintin adventure, Tintin and Alpha, unfinished. Following his express desire not to have Tintin handled by another artist, it was published posthumously as a set of sketches and notes in 1986. In 1987, Fanny closed the Hurd Studios, replacing it with the Hurd Foundation, and in 1988, the Tintin Magazine was discontinued. Hurd never wanted another person to handle his character Tintin, and thus, the when the author died after three more four more years, the uh, magazine or the Hurd Studio came to an and then it became a foundation. So this is about the author and uh, now we will have a look at the characters uh, in the this particular adventure series of Tintin, Tintin in Tibet. We have Tintin, Snowy, the dog of Tintin, Captain Haddock, Cuthbert Calculus, but he, has, he is there only in a, in a particular, in a one scene only because even though he is a recurring persona in all of the Adventure series of Tintin. Here we will see him only uh, in the first two pages of the comic book. Then Chang Chong Chen is the friend of Tintin. Cheng Li Kin, Chang Lin Yi, Tarke, Yeti, Blessed Lightning, Shining Light, Lobzang, Grand Abbot, Abdullah, Wan Chen Yi, Nesta. These three, the last three people, they are only mentioned. They are not being shown. 
Now, Tintin made his first appearance in Tintin in the land of Soviets as a journalist, reporting on the Bolsheviks of Soviet Russia with his loyal dog Snowy, and soon evolved into an investigative reporter and crime buster whose curiosity draws him into the dangerous circles of tra drug traffickers and mercenaries. So, in all the Tintin adventures, there will be a villain, and Tintin will be always uh, going after this particular villain, and ultimately, Tintin will defeat the villain and he will become come out success. But you can see that in this particular comic book, Tintin in Tibet, there is no villain. Tintin is trying to help his friend. There is no villain. So, uh, always keep in mind that Tintin, sorry, Herge has written this particular comic book while he was in a psychological trauma. He wanted to escape, come out of that trauma. And he, sometimes we ourselves become the villain, no? So just like that, Hirsch felt that he himself is the villain. Now, Tintin has, uh, in this particular comic book, we can see that by helping Chang from the Himalayan snow, Hirsch is trying to help his own self out of the psychological trauma. So Tintin, then Snowy is Tintin's wire fox terrier dog and a protagonist of the series. The bond between the two is significantly strong as they have saved each other's lives numerous times throughout the series. Snowy seldom speaks but is instead seen thinking. When we are in Snowy's mind, it generally consists of a debate between a good and bad version of Snowy's conscience. This usually ends up in catastrophe for Snowy as usually the wrong choice is made. Snowy is clearly able to communicate with Tintin in the series. Like Captain Hoddock, Snowy is quite, quite fond of Lock Lamb brand whiskey. Snowy rarely leaves Tintin's style intentionally, only doing so when the two have been forcefully separated. Unfailingly, the pair are always reunited at the end of the adventure. And we will see Captain Archibald Haddock also a recurrent persona in all the Tintin adventure series. He is a retired merchant sailor who likes large almond whiskey and hates mineral water. He is also one of Tintin's closest friends. He first appeared in The Crab with the Golden Claws and had been in every Tintin book since then. So this was the first Tintin series in which he appeared. And from then on, he was someone who was a close contact of Tintin. Kutbert Calculus, he appears only in one two pages of this particular adventure series of Tintin. He is a good friend of Tintin and one of the main characters of the series. He is very nearly deaf, though he claims he is just a little hard of hearing in his right ear. Now, Chang Chong Chen is a Chinese boy who meets Tintin during his search for Professor Fang Hezi Ying in the Blue Lotus. The pair first met when Tintin rescued Chang from a flooded river along the way to Hoko. Chang later appears in Tintin in Tibet where he is lost in the Himalayas after surviving a plane crash and is sheltered by the Yeti. Tintin, Snowy and Captain Haddock then venture to Tibet to rescue him. The character of Chang was based upon Chang Chong Chen, a real friend of Herge. Cheng, Kin, Cheng Li Kin is the owner of a Chinese store in Kathmandu. He is the cousin of Chang Chong Chen's adoptive father Wang, Wang Chen Yi. Both Tintin and Captain Haddock met meet Cheng Li Kin during the journey to Nepal in search of Chang Chong Chen after the latter's plane crashed in the Himalayas. Li Kin discourages Tintin from searching for Chang, believing him to be dead. However, this does not stop Lin Tintin, who is still convinced that he is alive and in need of rescue. So, another character that they meet in Tibet, Kathmandu. Now, Tarke. Tarke is a major character in the comic uh, because Tarke is the Sherpa guide who helps Tintin to locate the ill-fated Patna Kathmandu flight carrying Chong Chang Chong Chen in Tintin in Tibet. Though reluctant to risk the dangerous attempt to find Chang, who he believes is already dead. Tarke leads Tintin, Snowy and Captain Haddock to the wreckage site of the site of the plane. After initially leaving the site to return to his new home, Tarke feels guilty for abandoning them and returns just in time to save Tintin and Haddock who were in a perilous situation. However, he subsequently breaks his arms and must return to the plains after partly recuperating at the Buddhist monastery of Korbiyong, while Tintin and Captain continue their search for Chang. Tarke have been based on the Nepali Sherpa Ang Thakre, Tarke, a Sirdar of the French expedition Annapurna Air 8000, which reached the summit of Annapurna on the 3rd of June 1950 with Maurice Hosa. So, this Tarke is based on a real persona. 
and Tarke. So Tarke is someone who always discourages Tintin by saying that your friend is already dead. But anyway, Tarke has a mind, a conscience uh, to help Tintin and ultimately they find Jack. Now Yeti is a large ape-like creature said to inhabit the Himalayan regions of Nepal and Tibet. While Yeti's existence is still believed in by the local folk of Central Asia, the scientific community generally regards Yeti as nothing more than a legend given the lack of any conclusive evidence to support the mythology surrounding it. However, the creature very much does exist as Tintin encountered the Yeti in Tibet while he is searching for his lost friend Chan. Tintin hears tales of the Yeti from locals he encounters and is also warned about them by his guide, Tarkin. The Yeti rescued Chang from the wreckage of the crashed plane and carried him to shelter in a cave where he rests recovering his strength. So it is Yeti who helps Chang out of the crashed plane. Once the Yeti searches the, sees the search party, not knowing their intentions and perhaps thinking they mean to harm Chang, he takes the boy and flees to his two, true home, a cave in the Horn of the Ark, a mountain in a much farther location. So that is where Tintin finds Chang, Horn of the Ark. After Tintin, Snowy and Captain Haddock discover the Yeti's cave, they wait for it to leave and attempt to rescue Chang. The Yeti returns to his cave before Haddock can warn Ta Tintin and he reacts with anger upon seeing Tintin taking Chang away. As he reaches towards Tintin, he sets off the flash bulb of the camera which scares him away. Tintin and Haddock carry Chang back to the village of Charabang and he explains to them that the Yeti was the one who actually saved him after the crash and took him away from the rescue party. So, you will ultimately see that Yeti is not a creature who is going to, uh, who, who the natives are very much afraid, but he is a very much a lovely creature who has helped Chang. Along the way, they briefly encounter the Yeti again, but he is scared off this time by Harrow blowing his nose. After Chang has been prepared for comfortable transport, he and Tin he, Tintin and Haddock are met ceremonially by the grand abode and an emissary group of monks of the Korbyong, the Buddhist monastery where the people of the Buddhist monastery, they help Tintin and Chang, who take them back to Korbyong where Chang recovers. As their party travels away from the monastery, they hear the Yeti's howl. On final time, Chang muses that the Yeti is by no means a wild animal, but instead has a human heart and soul to which Tintin agrees is possible. Alone again, Yeti sadly watches their departure from a distance, but does nothing else as it possibly now understand that Tintin's intentions were to help Chang. So that is how the comic ends. Now, Bless Lighting is a resident Tibetan Buddhist monk, the monastery of Kaur Beyond, and he is gifted with psychic and elevation powers. So he is the one who sees that uh, Tintin and his uh, and Captain Haddock they are in great danger. So he has a kind of uh, telepathic vision. He is able to see what is happening. So that is blessed lightning. And Lobsang is a young Tibetan Buddhist monk of the monastery of Korbyong. He is still an apprentice monk at the time of Tintin's travel in Tibet. Lomsang is a very active boy and is not afraid of dogs like some of the other monks. It was Lomsang who identifies Snowy's gender as male. He calls Snowy Powder Snow. So Lomsang is someone who identifies Snowy and who helps Tintin and ha Captain Haddock from the snow. Chang Lin Yi is the son of Chen Li Kin, cousin of Chang Chong, Chen's adoptive father. Lin Yi lives with his father and helps his father run his Kathmandu business. We have already seen the father of Chang Lin Yi, the character. And here we have the grand abode of Korbyong. So he is the major Buddhist monk and the Korbyong Buddhist monastery. The grand abode is the head Tibetan Buddhist monk of the monastery of Korbyong. It is the grand abode who orders for the care of Tintin, Captain Haddock, Tarke and Snowy at the monastery until they are fit to live. During their stay, the grand abode tells Tintin to abandon his quest and return to his homeland. However, at the conclusion of Tintin in Tibet, the grand abode leads a ceremonial emissary group of monks who present Tintin with a skilled scarf in honor of both the bravery he has shown and the strength of his friendship with Chang. Now about the comic, Tintin in Tibet was first published in Tintin magazine in the autumn of 1959. Hirsch presented his proposed 
front cover for the upcoming book to cast a man the principle behind the concept was simple tinden snowy captain haddock and sherpa takre examining the athi snowy footprints so that is how the front cover comes apart from the colorful characters and red oval at the top of the cover which contained the title of the story in black font the whole composition was bathed in white accentuating the majesty and purity of the surroundings and also showing the psych physical uh, psychological trauma that her was going to okay i'll discuss the rest of the portion in the next class thank you